Hi, my name is Becky Morales, and I write the blog KidWorldCitizen.org. I started blogging about five years ago. Um, my family is a mixture of cultures from around the world. Through marriage, my husband's from Mexico. Through birth, my two daughters are Mexican-American. And through adoption, my sons are Chinese, Ethiopian, and African-American. I started blogging because I wanted to share ideas on how parents can teach their kids about the world and about their heritage cultures. And for this online summit on raising global citizens today, I'm going to speak about arts and crafts at home, which is using art to explore the world. And all of the websites and the projects that I mentioned during this presentation are going to be available online through the online summit um, website. And you're also going to be getting um, links and some more information. <clears throat> so this is what I'm going to cover today. I'm going to talk about how we can use global celebrations to learn about art and vice versa how we can combine books and art to learn the context, the cultural context, how we can use videos to learn about the process of making art, learning about famous artists around the world, a really fun project called the Google Art Project, and then collaborative art partnerships, which is a so one way that in my family we talk about our heritage cultures and talk about other cultures is by talking about celebrations. And a fun way to introduce world cultures is by doing art projects related to certain celebrations. So for example, you might you know, go to a Chinese New Year celebration at your local community center, and then when you come home, maybe you can make a little dragon craft and talk about the symbolism of dragons. Or during Christmas time, you might make ornaments from around the world and talk about how people in Norway celebrate Christmas and how they celebrate it in Germany. Um, you might learn about a completely new holiday that your family doesn't celebrate, like Day of the Dead or Diwali. And as you're learning about it, you can um, make a really simple, you know, chalk rangoli for your front porch, just like that top picture. We did that at the library. And it was so easy. It was just um, colored sand and chalk. And the kids all got to participate. And it was a nice way because we can bridge cultures when we talk about similarities between the different celebrations. So for example, maybe at our house, we dress up for Christmas and we have a big family dinner and we exchange gifts and these are our decorations. And in India, when they have Diwali, they also dress up even though the dress is different and they also have a family dinner even though the food might be different and they also use decorations. And so then you can talk about the different decorations and it's really accessible for kids and it's a fun project no matter what age you are. Um, another thing that I really like to do with my kids is we love to read books. Um, they just, they love story time. And recently at school they did this very cool weaving project. And I thought this is such a good opportunity to talk about where weaving comes from and what cultures have this strong influence of weaving that goes back centuries really and so I went to the library and I got some different books out about weaving um, in the top left corner those are some books about Navajo rug weaving then we talked about in Ghana they have the kenti cloth and um, there are some great books about the spider weaver weaver and all the different legends that go along with that the middle book called Kunu's basket is about a Native American from Maine Penobscot tribe who does basket weaving and then, of course, Guatemalan weaving by Abuelas Weave is very, very famous. And it was really fun to look at how they use a very large loom compared with the smaller ones in the other books. And then the bottom is Afghani weavers um, making the carpets. And it was so interesting for my kids when we located those different countries on the globe to see how widespread, really, it's every corner of the earth has some kind of a weaving culture. Whenever you do do an art project, I really like to look at books or videos or photos from the actual people that are the experts, the real artists. So um, for example, we watch YouTube videos all the time because it's just fascinating and it's kids love video. They, you know, they're just hooked on screens. And so before we did the dot painting in the upper right, that's the Australian Aboriginal dot painting, we watched these videos by a very famous artist and it was 
honestly mesmerizing to see kids watched it and it was kind of a long video afterwards all I did was put q-tips and paint on the table and they just kind of were inspired I guess by the video and just took off and textiles are a really big thing on the left hand side I have some pictures we always look at pictures before we do it so we looked at molas uh, the top one is a Bali uh, kind of a batik that we did on the right was a t-shirt using glue instead of hot wax. Then the second picture are molas from Panama, which are a cloth that uses layers and layers. Um, and then we have, oh, that's weaving from Guatemala. We have the kinti cloth, Irish um, sheep. We learn about wool and how important sheep are to Irish culture. And then Adinkra from Ghana. So there's another thing that I love to do is look at famous artists around the world because frequently in school we might hear of the big ones. You know, we might hear about Picasso and Monet, but we leave out a lot of the other artists from different countries that are just as famous and just as incredible. So recently we got out a bunch of books about Frida Kahlo and um, one of the books was talking about how she liked to put her pets, which was a pet monkey, in her photos. So we did a little self-portrait with pets and my daughter was so excited to bring you know, her dogs in the picture and her bearded dragon and we had a snake at the time. But I think that immediately she was more interested when she learned the meanings behind the paintings and was able to apply it to her own life. And so bringing Google Art Project actually walks around famous art museums with a camera and, and zooms in and gets really good views. And, so, and then the next thing that is new to me, but I'm really fascinated by it, we've only done one. I used to do this with my Spanish classes. Um, we take a famous painting, and the one on the left is only about four inches by four inches maybe five by five, and I divided it up in a grid, and then I cut it apart, and I numbered it on the back so I knew what order it would be in. And in Spanish class, I would hand out one square to each student in the class, and they had to recreate it on an eight by eight or a 10 by 10 piece of paper, whatever was on their little square. And then we would tape it up in the hallway and we would make this big mural. So recently we had a little pen pal project and I wanted to try it with them. Now these kids were little, some of the kids were only five and I think they went up to age eight. So it's not perfect, but you can see what the mural looks like. And the last thing I wanna talk about is that you can always do geography through art. I absolutely love geography. I'm always trying to teach my kids geography because I don't think they learn it in school as much as I would like. So we've done several art projects throughout the years. Starting in the upper left, those are salt dough maps. Um, so I, we did an Africa one because my son is from Ethiopia and he wanted to learn more about Africa. We did a Mexico one for my daughters and we did a China one. And the best part is the tactile experience of making the mountains where the mountain range is and carving the rivers where the river is. I mean, he was so excited that the Nile River started in Ethiopia and he was so excited to see how close it was to the coast and where the jungles were and where the deserts were. So it's just a really fun, fun activity and it's very hands-on and you can be very little very young and, and make these projects and they turn out stunning I mean I really think he was like four and we painted that I'm not even kidding <laughs> um, learning about flags is really fun and you can do lots of art projects with flags and when you do the art projects like these shrinky dinks you can also talk about the symbolism and there's so many stories behind the colors and why they chose the emblems landscape and landform art with paper that's all with scrapbook paper so that was fun because the desert is actually like sandpaper and the water of the rivers is like this um, almost like foil shiny paper and the mountains were corrugated cardboard so the kids really really liked that and they were learning it in third grade anyway and so I thought it would be fun to do it at home and they did that they cut out those little cacti by themselves um, the next one in the upper right is a collage we I love collages and so I have the kids look up famous landforms that's Angel Falls in Venezuela but you could do anything I think my other daughter did um, Kilimanjaro in Kenya and I think the Uluru Rock in Australia we did we kind of picked different ones and we just cut up mag or tore up magazines and it was very very easy to do multicultural dolls below we always do that for international week you can pick a culture either your own or another culture and you do research on what type of clothing they wear for their typical national dress and the Inukshuk we were talking about 
the Northern Lights and what it looks like, and we saw so many pictures and videos, and that's, that was a watercolor painting. And then, oh, the Morpho Butterfly Craft. My daughter is obsessed with biomes and animals, and so we did the, we learned all about butterflies, and then we got to make that. Um, that is everything that I have for you related to using art and crafts to teaching your kids to be global citizens and to learn about the world and to deepen their global learning. I hope that you enjoy this series. Remember that all of our resources will be available for you on the website for the online summit on raising global citizens from Multicultural Kid Blogs. And I'm Becky from kidworldcitizen.org. Everything you saw here is on my website. Um, I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye.